Hearing loss is a silent epidemic. It's an epidemic because of its prevalence and because of its pervasive nature. It's a silent epidemic because it isolates those affected from the interactive and communication around them. And Helen Keller contrasted the difference between a loss of hearing and a loss in vision by saying that blindness separates people from things, but deafness separates people from people. She went further by stating that the problems of deafness are deeper and more complex, if not more important than those of blindness. Deafness is a much worse misfortune for it means the loss of the most vital stimulus, the sound of the voice that brings language, sets thoughts astir, and keeps us in the intellectual company of man. Millions of people have this experience around the globe. The World Health Organization estimates that currently there are 360 million people with disabling permanent hearing loss around the world. And this number is increasing because of a general aging world population. And that's why it's projected that in 2030, hearing loss will be the seventh most significant contributor to the global burden of diseases alongside communicable conditions like HIV and TB. In South Africa, more than three million people suffer from disabling hearing loss, many of whom are children. It's estimated that around 6,000 babies are born every year with a permanent disabling hearing loss. And the reality is that if those children are not identified early enough, the consequences are dire. It affects language development. There's a critical period in which language development can take place. And if you miss those first year, the first year or the first few years of life, you have lifelong consequences. And the resulting effects are poor outcomes on things like speech and language ability, on uh, academic performance, reading and writing, on emotional development, and ultimately on vocational outcomes and quality of life. And in adults, there is also numerous quality of life indicators that are affected. Things like social isolation, fatigue and depression are associated with hearing loss in adults. So whilst hearing loss may not be a life-threatening condition, it is certainly a threat to what is at the heart of our quality of life, interactions, relationship and communication. The good news, however, is that if we can provide the access early enough, the outcomes can be dramatically altered. For example, in young children who have hearing loss, young babies, if they're identified early enough, their outcomes can be on par with their normal hearing peers. And I think this is what's so rewarding about being involved in this field for research but also for practice because the outcomes that are possible are dramatic. It can be 180 degrees different if the access is there. So the problem therefore is not about what outcomes are possible, but how do we make access available to potentiate those outcomes? And access to care is the major challenge globally in this field. More than 80% of people with disabling hearing loss reside in developing countries where we know they will most likely not have access to any care. We know in Sub-Saharan Africa, for example, there's one ear and hearing healthcare worker for every million people. So we have to look for ways to improve access to care, that's clear. But improving access is a complex and a multi-pronged uh, strategy. But one of the most promising avenues for a impact in the short term is to capitalize on the technological and connectivity revolutions that we've seen in the past few decades. And I think to bring that, those revolutions home to you, I'd like us to just have a look at a short advertisement from about 25 years ago because I think it illustrates this technological and connectivity revolution and brings the message home. Those who think getting a car phone is not for them, whatever the reason, haven't kept up with the booming industry of cellular radio telephones. Scenes like this are becoming commonplace in U.S. cities where cellular is available today. This revolution in communications could make it possible for more and more people to have a phone in their car, or even one that travels with you. Like this unique cellular portable made by Motorola, which weighs only 30 ounces. 
Right now, businessmen and women are major users of radio telephones where cellular is in service. But more people will take advantage of cellular as its benefits become apparent. Eventually, seeing people using cellular phones may seem as commonplace as someone checking time on an electronic watch, figuring on an electronic calculator, or programming on an electronic computer. Industry watchers say there are only a few thousand cellular phones in use right now, but that number is expected to grow considerably within the next few years during the cellular revolution. So that advertisement looks like a joke, but it was very serious back then. Technology and connectivity has exploded in the past two to three decades. Microprocessing power has now put a powerful PC in the palm of our hands. And connectivity has changed the way in which the world works, especially the developing world. 90% of people around this planet had access to a mobile phone signal in 2010. There are now more mobile subscriptions in the world than there are people. That means internet connectivity is available virtually everywhere where there are people. Go to rural Kenya and you'll see a subsistence farm, farm worker with his phone. And he's using that phone not just to make calls, but he's using that phone to improve his farming, to find out where the best prices are for his produce. And it's not just dumb phones, it's smartphones also. Smartphone penetration uh, is expected to reach one in every two people in South Africa in 2017, and that's just around the corner. And there's no reason why we should see that this is going to slow down in the near future. It's just a matter of seeing how can we best utilize these revolutions to provide healthcare services to people. And in fact, the chief executive of the United Nations Foundation has recently stated that mobile phones have the potential to have as big an impact on global healthcare as Sir Alexander Fleming's 1928 discovery of penicillin. So one of my main research interests has always been in providing access to care, especially in ear and hearing health care. But now also to try and harness these revolutions to provide these, the benefits that they have to make access more widely available. So I'd like to end off just by mentioning one of the projects that we've been involved with in recent um, years, and, and that's the Year Screen Project. The, Department of Health and the Department of Basic Education in South Africa brought out a policy document in 2012 called the Integrated School Health Policy. In that policy, they require 1.1 million grade one pupils to have their hearing screened every year. Now, that's not happening. And the reason it's not happening to a large extent is the limitations of current equipment and devices. And the screening devices are usually bulky, they're heavy, they require electricity, many rural areas don't have electricity, and they're prone to the influences of the environmental noise, and they require significant training for the operators to do these tests appropriately. And then of course they're quite costly. And we've been working on developing and validating both in the lab but also in field studies, a smartphone based hearing test that can replace these devices for this type of screening. And we don't see it as a better device that we've been working on, but we really see it as a whole new way, a different way of solving this problem. A total hearing screening solution we like to think of. The hearing screen application provides a way to give easy and reliable access to hearing screening at the grassroots levels. It's been developed so that laypersons can use it. That means we can change the model of providing access to care. It does not have to be a specialized health provider. It can be a teacher in the school. It can be a community health worker. It can be a volunteer. And this is in line with the decentralization emphasis of the Department of Health to provide services where the people are. And in this case, mobile solutions provide a way to increase this access to care and in this case also at a fraction of the cost of current equipment and with major advantage, advantages such as automated testing and interpretation. Then we use the sensors in these phones to monitor the environment to make sure that the testing can be done accurately. 
They're also mobile and lightweight, and they don't require electricity if they're charged, of course. And because we're using smartphones, they are by nature data capturing and data sharing devices. So all the data are captured, rich data from that site, geotagged, and then it's uploaded to a cloud-based server so that we can do remote management, monitoring of the testing done on the ground. And we have a number of studies underway currently in schools, in communities, in primary healthcare clinics, where we're testing this model of decentralized ear and hearing healthcare access. And the findings to date have been very encouraging. Apart from the differentiating advantages of this kind of technology, it is also clinically accurate and efficient, comparable to existing gold standards. So in conclusion, technology and connectivity are not the answers. They do not replace the skill and the uh, importance of specialized hearing healthcare personnel. But they are powerful aids and tools that do provide us with the capacity to impact access to care on a massive scale. And in our case, it's for early hearing um, access, ear, uh, ear and hearing access in South Africa, but also globally, but especially in the underserved and underprivileged areas of the world. Because today, people with hearing loss and deafness do not need to be separated, to use the words of Helen Keller, from that most vital stimulus, the sound of the voice that brings language, sets thoughts astir and keeps us in the intellectual company of man.